record. I mean, you must be. You, so you teach mechatronics. Yeah, um, I have been uh, teaching in in a in a university uh, for six six years. Yeah, but now I'm I'm in another in another school, and we have a uh, heavy machinery. Yeah. Let me just take some notes here. Mm. Uh, tell me, so what school, sorry, what school is that that you're teaching at? Uh, I was teaching in, uh, it, the name is Univer Politecnica University of Southern Zacatecas. Universidad Politecnica. Yeah. So, so, so Oaxaca, what yeah. is it? Southern what? Sorry? University of Southern what? Oaxaca? Southern, Southern uh, Zacatecas. Zacatecas. This is the state. State of Mexico, yeah, it's in right on, on the middle. Uh -huh. so Let me write it, write it on, uh, because it's um, on Spanish. But, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Set. Yeah. There we go. Tell me, how did you find out about the, the opportunity here? Um, I'm, I just um, uh, see your t TED, TED talk 10 years ago, and mm. I began to follow you. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been a strong uh, follower of your work and your, your, job, your initiatives. And I have um, seen all that and you have created the life track, the, the liberator, the, all your stuff. So I am a truly believer. Yeah, uh, I mean, what would you see as the 10 years, man? It's been some time ago. What, what would be the ideal, tell, you know, tell me more, like, what would be the ideal outcome? Like, uh, what would you like to see yourself doing after this? Mm, well, um, I don't ha I don't own a land here in Mexico, but however, um, I have some friends that have uh, uh, extended lands. So uh, I think that in the future we can make this this kind of boot camps here in Mexico to 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 build to build interesting things. Because um, where I live right now in the north of Mexico, uh, there's a, a lot of Mennonite, Mennonite uh, fields, but they are changing their, their way of living. And they used to be uh, productive, and now they, they have changed, and everything is uh, very commercial, very uh, dangerous. It's, uh, I think, uh, Mm. Here in Mexico, we need uh, some kind of uh, sustainable initiatives, and everybody is crazy about the, the commercial, the commercial products or commercial trademarks. But I like the the the, the initiative you have with for working with open source uh, hardware and open source software and all this. Uh, this friends, I think Mexico needs something like that here. What's your background on open source? Have you been involved in any open source projects or? Um, well, um, how, how is, I mentioned in my videos, um, I am, I began to read to uh, Bill Mollison. I, I read to um, the videos of uh, uh, Jeffrey Lawton mm -hmm. and this. Uh, this uh, guy, um, my, uh, how do I say, Harry, uh, the, the guy from the aquaponics, I don't, I don't remember, Harry Mule, I don't, I don't remember yeah. so good the mm -hmm. name, but he's a guy from uh, aquaponics. So um, I, I just uh, very interested in creating some, some things, but 
not so much people here in Mexico, they uh, want to pay for, for that. Uh, however, I was working on an on a aquaculture uh, farm here, uh, some two hours from here, mm. uh, with a rainbow tro trout fish. But this is only a guy, and it's only, uh, it, it was a good job. However, um, I received this uh, opportunity to work in the heavy machinery school, so I moved, I moved here. Yeah, what kind of heavy machinery do you work on? I mean, what, what kind of teaching, like how to, not how to build that, right? It's not about building, because nobody builds, up, <laughs> builds machines. Yeah, well, uh, this is a school, this school, um, has this career of heavy machinery, but it's maintenance. Oh, so yeah, maintenance. Uh, maintenance, yeah, <laughs> maintenance to heavy machinery. However, mm, our background is not the, the most appropriate because I am an electronic, and my boss is a mechatronic. So um, I have been working on mechatronics, but I am an electronic. So nobody has this uh, uh, is um, appropriate career on heavy machinery. However, we are doing courses and courses to, uh, in, uh, in the order to, to, uh, to have the, the knowledge necessary to teach the, the, these guys, the, the boys. So, um, um, it's kind of to, uh, to, to making a lot of courses because we don't have the, this, uh, the, the, the proper, uh, Preparation, because we we don't have this this uh, licenses to 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 have the um, the heavy machinery uh, subject matters. Yes, yeah, subject matters. We we don't have this. And, uh, me as an electronic engineer, I I don't, I don't know so much about uh, heavy machinery. However, I'm doing my best to read and read a lot too. You can in touch. Yeah. What did you study in college? So, so do you, did you ever use KiCad or open source electronics design, or is that a, a electronics? Yeah, in my, in my school, I have to I have to use the SolidWorks because everybody believes in SolidWorks. However, I use the OpenCAD and and I began to using FreeCAD because I know that you use it. But uh, I am the only the only guy that uses this uh, kind of tools, so it's me against the others, uh, against all the, the teachers. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, but let, tell, let me ask you about: uh, Have you ever used KiCad, the open source electronics design? No, KiCad. I have never used it. No. When you use an electronics en engineer, do you do circuit design? Yeah. Um, yeah. Some kind of. What? Um, Mm, not so, not not so, not so much on on on, on professional professional uh, mm, software. Mm -hmm. However, uh, it's uh, uh, hobbies, hobbies, uh, circuits. Yeah, only things like that. What kind of circuits? Uh, well, I receive a. Uh, um, uh, a course in uh, edx.org. It's a kind of massive uh, courses, uh -huh. MOC courses from the N from the MIT. So I I I, I uh, uh, take one of these courses with Arm. It's an, an Indian teacher. It's uh, very good. So this is this was to um, to. Uh, empower my 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 for my career because because I just think that uh, in my school I was not receiving the, the a good a good uh, good courses on electronics so I take this this courses on on the edx dot org yeah. <laughs> yeah have you built three D printers are you familiar with three D printers yes um, this is my third um, printer I have. Um, I'm using a Lutz boat uh, horse, a workhorse yeah. type six, six. Yeah. Did you ever build one, or you just bought them? Uh, um, 
this this last I, we bought we bought him, uh, but um, uh, however I I'm assembling my two first uh, 3D printers. Uh, it was uh, cheap shipped from China, and the other it was assembled in in my school. What brand? Uh, no brand. No, no brand. brand. No brand. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me more about. So, what 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 all do you are you familiar with mechatronics and can you um, do design stuff? Mm, well, um, I had um, teaching every kind of of subject matter on on on, on this uh, six years. Um, I have. Uh, I have been involved in in the in the subject matters of mechanical, and even when I, I am an electronic engineer, and uh, I have uh, working on on this uh, robotic manipulators, robotic arm. Yes, um, I like to to do that that stuff. Um, have you ever done remote control with solenoids? Remote control? Yeah. Uh, Build by myself? No, I have never. Can you do it? Can you build us a joystick that we can run the tractor with? <laughs> yeah, we might. Uh, 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 you mean to to print it and on a three D and make uh, some 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 remote control? Yeah, so just yeah, simple Arduino with solenoids. You know, Arduino plus solenoids and and yeah, wire yeah. control. Mm. Yes, of course. Uh, we can make we, we can make some uh, research uh, beforehand to uh, to try to do some uh, kind of side side B, right? You mean something like side B, or uh, what's that? Mm. So what is that? Side B. Side B. It's a, a, a kind of um, radio frequency for Arduino. It's a very commercial. Uh, uh, how do you spell it? Uh, Z I G V. Uh, sorry, I think it's. Uh, I think this is it. This is very uh, You know. Um, um, Okay, yeah. What city are you in right now? By the way, where do you live? I lost you. Uh, in, uh, okay, here you go. Uh, sorry? Uh, what city do you live in right now? Zigbee. Zigbee, oh, okay. yeah, Zigbee. Yeah, this is the, the right spelling. Zigbee, sorry, yeah. Low power digital areas. I don't know if you, we need to go that far. We can probably. Are you familiar with Zigbee? Mm, I have one room here in my, my home, just here. But uh, I, I have used it very. Uh, I saw few. So, yes. Does it work on an Arduino? Can you connect it to Arduino? Yes, it could, could, it could be connected to Arduino. Yeah, maybe that's our solution. We'd like to do. Um, <coughs> We'd like to do a remote control version of the tractor. Why? Because it saves you from danger or abuse on a body. So, we're, I mean, as a practical thing, for example, foundation building, mm -hmm. we'd like to do that and eventually automate the, uh, complete the foundation for the CD co home. Yeah, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, so, are you in a position to be on site for the six months of, of the program from July 1st to December 22nd? What yes, happens? of course. What, what yes. happens to your job? You, is that you're quitting your job or what's happening? Uh, well, um, um, this the jobs here in Mexico are not well paid. Uh -huh. um, I, I received uh, 6,000 pesos. It is like uh, $300 by bi-weekly, by, yes, bi-weekly, $300. So it's so few. Um, however, I, I um, uh, 
I, w I want to do this uh, because I'm, I don't have m much here in Mexico to uh, to 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 do. It's a very poor salary here, uh, but this this is this is what it is in Mexico. It's uh, yeah. low 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 salaries. Yeah. yeah. Who makes all the money in Mexico? <laughs> hmm? Who makes all the money in Mexico? Because you've got a definite class, you know, like the there's like super rich people and and the rest are poor. Uh, who are all the rich people? What do they do for a living? Well, I think that this um, they have a uh, land, they have a uh, capital, cattle, or they uh, they have uh, houses to rent. Um, yes, people they have. Uh, do you think that you can? Um, you know, were you thinking about bringing this back to Mexico or working with us on site? At the end. Mm, can, can you repeat? Yeah, I'm asking, would you like to bring this know-how back into Mexico, or are you thinking more about uh, working with us here in the United States? Um, whatever the, the, the options is, is good to me, because I really want to, to help uh, people here, because I, 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 I see a, a great uh, opportunity for this in Mexico. However, people, it's not in the, their time. It's uh, I have I have been spending many years talking and talking about the the good initiatives that the, 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 that I can see with you and, and nobody nobody can hear it because yeah. they are in this uh, this momentum of uh, following with the same traditional things, uh, but. Uh, however, I know that uh, if they can see it, they can buy it. Yeah. But but for me, it's it's, uh, it's more convenient to to stay there in, in, in the in the states and working there and, and make make some some something more tangible. What do you think would be the biggest impact if you took this back to Mexico? What do you think would be a product that you can do? So you're thinking about education product like running workshops like we do or how would you see it uh, can you describe it what you see in that well uh, my my first in intention when I uh, was was young it was to teach uh, uh, a kind of discipline to to heal uh, I, I was I was uh, uh, an instructor of Chin and Qigong and oh. it was a <laughs> It was a kind of yoga or tai chi, maybe like that. But it's not very not well now. Uh, however, it was my first my first uh, plan when I was young. So I received all with that kind of uh, courses, and, and I participated in that uh, great con congress. And when I touched the reality, I I um, I know that people. People they, they don't want to do that. They don't. They just want to to get a a pill, take it and forget about it. They just want to drink a couple of tecates and forget about the qigong. <laughs> well, yes, of course. Yeah. Do you practice qigong still? I practice qigong. Yes, wow. already, and I am I'm instructor of level one. Yeah. Are you still an instructor of qigong? Yes, I'm an instructor from qigong. And, and uh, it was my 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 dream to to have a kind of a, a eco eco uh, idea. Uh, I don't know if this is the right word. Well, global village or no? It's a uh, eco village. Yeah, eco, yes, eco village to uh, to um, get some people um, and they practice chicken and they do a lot of things during a month. And they could recover the hill and go to to the to the air places. So it was my my dream. Yeah. Wow. So I began to study in permaculture and aquaponics because I I think uh, that that chikung um, and permaculture permaculture it could be a, a great uh, uh, entertainment for the people who was uh, in the in the village to do something something good and they recovered the health. Yeah. 
So you're thinking about creating a, an, uh, a land-based facility, a healing facility, which includes Qigong and permaculture. That was that was the thought you had. Yeah. So this is our, this is why my my it, it was always my dream. Yeah. Um, what does it? What stands in the way of you doing that? What what resources do you need to make it happen? Oh, uh, well, I I know how to to do this. Uh, uh, this uh, eco uh, eco village. I I I am really interested in this eco, eco homes. So you do you you name it. You call it seed seed eco home too, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It is a uh, uh, a great a great idea. This uh, super adobe and this uh, calf. Uh, all this uh, bio construction techniques. It, it's very interesting, right? Yeah. Only thing is that this year, we only have the light frame construction version, the compressed earth block. We will mm -hmm. do that next year as a product. The light yeah. frame construction is much easier to do. So we're starting with that first and mm -hmm. moving on to the compressed earth block work next year as a product. Oh, well. So that's in terms of strategy for rollout so that we can get going easier mm -hmm. and then move to the higher performance compressed earth block, which is much harder to build. That's yeah. not that easy. Mm -hmm. So after we get established with, with light frame construction, meaning sticks, stick frame, mm -hmm. we'll move on. Yeah. But the and program is very ambitious. We, we're we're going to do our sawmill, we're going to do the saw pulverizer, and 3D mm -hmm. printing of plastic plus uh, construction materials, so plastic, plastic-based. Oh yeah. Uh huh. That could be mixed with sawdust, so for wood-like composites. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Um, what? So are you? You're talking about this uh, big, uh, big uh, 3D printer. Yeah. That it, uh, and it use uh, some uh, another kind of plastic. Yes, it could be the. The key, is, the key there is a heated temper heated chamber. So you can use any plastic, including polyethylene and polypropylene. And mm -hmm. So right now that doesn't exist in open source, so we have to create it. Yep. But both yes. the size and uh, the high temperature chamber. So we're going to work on it. You're going to work on it. If you wow. get in. I think you're going to yes. get in. Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, what? T tell me about the so so the the community that you were going to talk about permaculture and the healing center. Yes. Uh, what says well, do you, you need land for that, or you got land access to land? Uh, well, um, here in Mexico, we uh, uh, have a, a great, uh, a, a great group uh, of maybe two two hundred people who have studied with uh, some Chinese masters. They come, uh, mm. they come to Mexico the in nineteen. Uh, sorry, in, in 20, 2019, in 2019 they come uh, first to, first come to Mexico, and they uh, train us uh, for Qi, Qigong. Um, 2019. Know, yeah, two, two, 2019. Yes, August. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, mm, when we were on this uh, on this training, uh, we we. We start to talk and, and share some ideas, and many of them they work on on, on different uh, interesting things. One one of them working on, on a cafe towel and this uh, the, the coffee beans coffee beans uh, in Veracruz. Other guys work on uh, aquaponics. Other guys work on permaculture. Other guys have a uh, healing healing uh, centers. Others. They have a lot of a lot of, uh, of initiatives around around the country. So it was a um, um, uh, how to say it? Uh, uh, truly source of knowledge in, in that in that place. Yeah. And a center to share some power ideas, and we we began to to, to talk about. I, I talk about this. Uh, this uh, marching, marching, uh, OSE initiatives, and some of some of them have 
have been heard about you and some now. Yeah. And, and uh, it was a, a great, a, a great uh, place to to interchange ideas. So um, the the congress finished and everybody uh, get back to their homes and then the pandemia pandemia comes and we are uh, separated away. And, yeah. Yeah. Ah. And you went to China to teach, teach some mechatronics? No, uh, uh, I work on on, uh, on a Chinese on a Chinese college here in Mexico. That was here. Yeah, in because in, in Mexico, in Mexico, a company ca ca came, and this company makes uh, the DC motors for automotive, for mass and and another framework. So this. This huge plant inside, they have a college, and they recruit some some uh, guides from from uh, uh, from how to say that. Uh, well, it, it, these guys are from low resources, yeah. and they come to this college and they receive everything, and and they they become. Greatest, greatest CNNC machinist technicians. Chinese people or, or you talking about Chinese people? people are the, Chinese people it, uh, are their teachers and the, the students are Mexicans. Yeah. Um, yes, however, I, I uh, mix some, uh, some videos from, from the college in China and from the college in Mexico. Yeah. We're, I, I don't get it. So in, in, uh, in Mexico, were you a student of that college, or what was your role there? My role it, uh, was teaching uh, technical drawing and mathematics. Yeah, mathematics applied to the industry because the Chinese they don't want uh, anything, uh, nothing more than uh, use uh, functional use uh, functional knowledge to the college. They they want uh, only. Things that they can prove uh, to to be to be useful. Okay, so only mathematics, uh, but use it on the industry, and physics, but use it on the industry. Oh wow! So how long did you work there? When was that? Three years. I was working three years. That is. So that was. Uh... Wait, so the Chinese company was training Mexicans for its own factory? Yes. Yes, this is it. This is it. Wow. Yeah. Is there something funny about that? Um, I don't know, but however, Mexicans, they, they were amazed with uh, these uh, Chinese initiatives because uh, uh, everybody see this uh, like a... Uh, a great company because the company is giving everything to the poor, poor, poor little boys, and they receive uh, a great, a great uh, formation. And however, if the Chinese don't do that, uh, the crime in Mexico could take this these young guys, and and they could be recruited to to make more crime. How about we we say we change that? Oh, oh, sorry? How about we change that? Fix that. <laughs> well, it's uh, only 30 guys what is, uh, are taken every three months. So it's... Uh, every three months? Yes, 30 guys every three months. Who qualifies? How do they select the people? Um, well, um, my, my co co-workers, my, my boss, they go to the to the high Sierra in Mexico, and they uh, look for guys who has this uh, uh, health health mind and health body, and they uh, have a good attitude to to do their best to work there. Yeah. Your 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 co-teachers like have you ever gone recruiting yourself? 
Yeah, they, they go to recruit, recruit uh, young people, they themselves. I mean, are the people from high school or from where? From where? From the street? Uh, or how? They, they finish secondary. Yeah. Um, tell me a little, just a little bit more about it. So did you go through college, through like high schools, or did you actually, this was grassroots work, like were you actually going on the street and taking people off the street? Mm. <laughs> Sorry, Martian. Uh, can you repeat it, please? Yeah, no, I'm um, just uh, asking uh, uh, some questions here. But how the people that ended up working in these factories were they actually? Uh, you found them through guidance counselors or like job boards, or did you actually go on the street to look at oh, the okay. people? Well, they were uh, just. Uh, um, doing their, their school and the, on their home, but it's, these homes are really, really far from from the population, so... Uh, so it's rural? So rural yes, recruiting? Our communities, yeah, our communities are isolated from the civilization, very, very isolated. So uh, when they come to the school, uh, they receive everything like a sponge water, they absorb every, every knowledge they, they, that is uh, touching is. Are you talking about more like indigenous communities? Yes, yes. Mm, yes, it's uh, So this business was more like a social enterprise or was this just business as usual? I mean, uh, it sounds like more like social enterprise. Well, um, the Chinese company uh, no pay no taxes because they uh, they give this uh, mm, uh, they give uh, this uh, no, uh, instructions to to this to these guys so they can uh, avoid some taxes. Yeah. And then they hire them. And then they hire them, and they have a loyal loyal uh, uh, workers because they give uh, everything. Do they pay well or it's bad, bad pay? Yeah, no, they pay very, very well. But uh, however, they uh, ask them to, they, to do their best. So they work with a, the, uh, a new mind, mindset. Huh. Uh, so yeah, because it, it's a, it's a semi-military uh, instruction. So... Uh, you said semi-military? Uh, they have to do their their vets uh, on seven a.m. They have to to they put a line on the uh, under the the bed, and uh, all the shoes have to be on the line. And so it's very um, very strict training. Yeah, very strict Chinese uh, instruction. Huh. But overall, the Chinese are respected for doing this, or that's a positive, a very positive thing. Mm, uh, at the first, uh, it's a very uh, hard work for them. It's a tr truly hard for them because it, they are not accustomed to, to do they, th this kind of things. But they uh, realize many, many benefits from the discipline. Uh, and they, uh, they become really, really a family because uh, uh, Chinese, I, I think they are very uh, sin sincere. Uh, sincere. Sincere, yeah, with with uh, with the, uh, because they they uh, um, um, treat these guys ev every day, uh, seven days a week. So they develop a, a feeling, a feeling, um, reciprocal feeling. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we don't have that in America, in the, in, uh, the United States. <laughs> Chinese companies coming in to train. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's. I know, I know. It's backwards in America. <laughs> but, but for example, some of these guys have been uh, 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 managers in in another countries. So this was a truly, truly. Uh, message for all the other guys because one of them uh, become something that 
it was impossible to do uh, in other conditions, so it was a, a power me message to everybody. Yeah. You're saying that the, the people who learned were truly empowered? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. That's great. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> I know. What be? So I asked you, how do we fix this thing? And like, you know, because we work on uh, pressing global wor world issues, world issues. So th things like pov poverty alleviation, like, we <coughs> We try to approach the much bigger picture, but I, I'm wondering how that would apply to doing something within Mexico, let's say. So say you create one of these centers, how are you just like, so it sounds like if you're talking about healing and is that more like for the elite crowds or is this, how does this address, well, tell me how, how, how this addresses fundamental issues of uh, say productivity or decentralized production how do you see that happening? In the mod like say you, you're pointing out to the model of of the healing center. Would you see something like that combining with technology somehow or how, how would you mm -hmm. see potential? Well, uh, I don't know if you know something about Qigong, but Qigong is uh, the, the most uh, near to the science than than the medicine because medicine it's not a, it's not a exact science it's a practicum so uh, qigong instead it is some more uh touching with the with the physics but um, but a little people know about this uh, uh, it's very very um, very scientific and uh qigong qigong helped me uh, to to recover my health because i was i was uh, um, Many years ago, uh, very very uh, sick, and, uh, and sick for what? Uh, it, it was kind of a high stress, and this high stress developed some other things like a panic. Uh, how do you say it in English? Uh, when you have, you have a panic uh, attacks, attack panic attacks. I, I don't know if this is the name, but. but but uh, yeah. she could she help me to to to, to recover uh, this uh, ten years ago. So um, I was really uh, interested in in all things. But but uh, I think that the mixing of uh, this eco village and and this uh, human stuff. It's not uh, it's not uh, in conflict, you know. It's uh, people have have to do something, and while the people is recovering, they uh, well they are practicing. They are uh, trying to get uh, healthy healthy food. They yeah. they have to, to put uh, the mind on uh, another interesting things. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, my first thought was, ah, oh, well, oh, well, people. People want to 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 get in touch with the nature because yes. to me it, it was it was uh, happened to me when I was recovering my healthy healing I I I really really wanted to to, to be in touch with the nature yes sure but it, this never happened before because when I was working on, on a big city in Mexico Monterrey Monterrey is the, the the third the third large city in Mexico and I it was a uh, uh, crazy is to, to to be there because uh, there are a lot of population and I had never I had never feel that I wanted to, to, to be in touch with the nature and when I when I began to recover my health yeah. it was my first thought to be in touch with the nature yeah. so all this all these topics about permaculture and aquaponics yeah. uh, come uh, come come to me in a natural in a natural way so when I uh, was uh, re designing this idea in my mind about these centers of healing, the, the touch with the nature came to came to me uh, because uh, this is why I'm really really interested in permaculture and, and all the, the other uh, topics. Yeah, yeah, that's excellent. Yeah. Um, 
Do you have any questions about the program itself? Um, I have read everything you have you have write. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think you, that, that I could uh, have more questions because I have read it, everything. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, that sounds good. Sounds really good. Um, yes. Let me see. So.